Are you looking for the best seafood bowl on Hampton Roads? Boil Bay, hands down, has the best Cajun seafood bowl in the 757. Get a seafood combo with choices of Alaskan snow crab legs, shrimp, crawfish, green mussels with choice of sauce. Boil Bay sauce being the best option. Not to forget our incredible po' boy sandwiches. Boil Bay has a full bar including specialty cocktails, live music every Friday and Saturday night with happy hour specials Monday through Friday from 1230 to 6. Ladies night is every Wednesday. Come out to Boil Bay Cajun Seafood on Holland Road in Virginia Beach where we've got happiness in the bag. Boil Bay is a proud sponsor of Passing the Bar Podcast. So, um, let's just start it like this. Guys, welcome back to Passing the Bar Podcast, where we're a group of bartenders talking about the ups and the downs of the industry and all the social issues that we deal with. My name is Chris Pryor, and today I'm joined by Evan Vang. Hey, what's up, guys? And Steve Saucy. What's going on? Happy to be back. Guys, once again, it is so happy to be back, and thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we know that the this the industry is in kind of a state of emergency, not only the industry, but also our, our nation, not only our nation, but the whole world. Yeah, the world. You literally can't, yep. you can't look in a direction and not hear the news of the economy going down or the COVID-19 mm-hmm. uh, cases, you know, new cases, you know, uh, God rest the souls of, um, you know, all the individuals that have been taken by it. Um, but, you know, just wanted to kind of bring a little bit of a light to, you know, our industry, you know, um, specifically, because I feel like um, the service industry has been impacted a lot yeah. um, as for these, um, you know, mandated uh, statewide shutdowns of um, non-essential businesses. Um, you still got places like, you know, your Targets and your Walmarts and your hospitals and, um, you know, the I guess the ABC store is essential one too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. They're alcohol still alcohol sales They're, are up. Yeah. There's lines now. Straight up. <laughs> it skyrocketed. Guns and alcohol just boomed. Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> That's America. Yeah. That's America for you. America. <laughs> whiskey, <laughs> whiskey, and guns. whiskey and 45. <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> but in but in all seriousness, so, uh-huh. you know, the the past month now, you know, we've seen, you know, our <clears throat> our businesses that we've been that we've worked at, they've gone from um, you know, not being allowed, not having more than 10 people inside uh to doing curbside takeout to completely being shut down from being able to service guests on the inside. And only being able to do curbside takeout and now delivery. Yeah. So I know that um, a lot of restaurants out there are, are kind of hurting. I know absolutely a lot of service staff out there, you know, or you guys are hurting too. So um, this is just me just speaking out to you guys. Um, you know, stay strong, man. You know, try to try to practice some some positive habits and, um, you know. I think um, I do think that once all of this kind of finishes up and, and the you know we can make it on the other side of the of the curve, if you will, you know, then you know things will get back to normal. But the only difficult part about that is is that no one really knows, yeah, right. It all depends on like you know the country and the herd immunity, mm-hmm. um, or if they can find a, a vaccine, you know, for it. But treatment, know, treatment, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying like it's just crazy, man. Like as Steve, you you posted that that um, that interactive graph. Oh uh, God, with the mean? unemployment, yeah, you visualized. Oh yeah. my God, that is insane. It's scary when you look at it, right? Because mm-hmm. at first you're thinking, all right, it's not as bad as the Great Depression, right? We don't have that much unemployed. <laughs> Um, actually, <laughs> we're well, just the filing in that in just a month is unreal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a 330,000. Then it was 700, 700,000 the following week. It literally, yeah, it, it went over up to a, a few in, million in, a in over a week and a half or something like that. Yeah. Oh, six points, crazy. I think it was like 6.6. It's that's expect, <clears throat> expectation is about oh, okay. yeah, 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 but that's that's real. Yeah, but but going yeah. back to Chris, what you said, you know, like this the service industry. I mean, Evan, you sent us a great article that mm-hmm. you were featured in in, in Pilot uh, mm-hmm. Virginia Pilot, and it said that uh, of the record, forty six, um, we'll say forty seven thousand new M- unemployment filings happened in Virginia mm-hmm. in the week of March twenty first, and fifty seven percent of that. Was us unreal people working in the food industry? Yeah, hospitality. Yeah, that's wild. It's been you know le- what I mean, it's been less than a month. It's been less than a month, and and we talk about you know like non essentials, right? Well, if over half of the unemployed filing is the hospitality, that's that's a scary thought moving forward. 
but there, there needs to be a shift, like a, a change in the whole paradigm of how we do this thing. You know, yeah, like the, that's just the way I see it. There's yeah. no, there's no safety net for this group of people. But everybody wants that thing, though. Everybody wants to go out to dinner and have this, you know, opportunity to have these people take care of them. But there's nothing there for them, yeah. especially the if you've made mac and cheese the last five days in a row. Yeah, or if you've been able to find <laughs> fucking mac and cheese. Right. Like, yeah, 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 you ain't right. right. Yeah, beans and rice are hard to find these yeah. days. Ramen noodles and toilet paper are fucking gone. It's nuts. <laughs> Going back into my college days, of eating ravioli for lunch all the time. <laughs> Uh, it shows the culinary skills of everybody. All the fresh product is still sitting there. All the ramen is fucking gone. <laughs> like, that's what uh, everybody's doing. Soon there's going to be a huge yeah. markup on spices. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <damn> shit. <laughs> you know, we were, um, luckily enough, I've been able to, to work from home, you know, this this whole time. And, um, you know, Beth, you know, she works in, in the hospitals um, down in the ER, too. But when she comes home, like... There's you can't really like go out for food, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, like I've been able to, I like my my one love is like food, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. So, like, <laughs> getting down, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like getting down, it's like it's kind of cool for at least not cool, but like it's interesting to be able to go into a store and be like, oh fuck, they only have this. Oh fuck, they only have this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta like piece all the shit what together. Am I do? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. How, how am I gonna make this work? She's like, oh, yeah. is this a new recipe? I'm like. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Totally. <laughs> Absolutely. I just pulled it out my ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, thank God for an Instapot. You know, you can put anything in that bitch and it'll that fucking make everything. Speaking of that, that like shift, we've always talked about it, right? Like, every service industry person, even myself, mm-hmm. dude, there has been plenty of times where I don't know what it is why we just continue to tell each, ourselves that we're like indispensable. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it, you know, yeah. it's like in situations like this and, you know, pride to the um, to the employers that are out there that are trying to make it happen for their employees. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. I've seen fundraisers um, from, uh, I think it was like CP Shuckers. Mm-hmm. You guys did some too. Yeah, I was going to say, so we, um, so with Chicks, yeah, so we tried to stay open. We were open until, we'll say like the Monday before St. Patty's Day. Mm-hmm. And then that was when the governor came out and kind of said, look, all right, 10 people max. We're a huge place at the beach. You know, people love us, so they try to come. Uh, So we just kind of axed that and said, you know what, before we even jump into that, we're just going to go curbside. Mm -hmm. Um, So what was great that, uh, you know, all the employees got notified about is that our owners, uh, Mike and Corey, who are fantastic owners, what they decided to do is they had the managers come in. They were working curbside because they're still on salary. Uh, All the other, you know disposable, I guess, employees, the bartenders, the barbacks, kitchen staff, everyone, we're all out of work right now. Uh, So what they decided to do is they were like, all right, 100% of sales on Friday, Saturday to go is going to our employee relief fund. And then that did so well that they were like, okay, maybe we can't do 100, but we'll go down to like 25 (laughs) or 30% for Sunday and Monday. Uh, And then from then on, yeah, we've been closed, unfortunately. So yeah, it's brutal. So I think the day that we closed was the 16th. It was it was it was, right, it was it, around there. It yeah. was like it was like the fifteenth thing was a Monday, and then the sixteenth was a Tuesday. And I came in, and the the governor had said, you know, recommending ten people at a time, um, social distancing stuff. So we we went straight to go, and then that was after that. That was it. It was like we went from you know having thirty shifts a day to four. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you know you have to decide who gets to work, and then it, luckily there were some good people that that was working that worked with me that. It was their second job, and they said, "Look, I'm, you know, I'm good. That this is just for extra money. So hand those, hand these shifts." To oh, these that's other cool. People. They kind of stepped up and gave and the, room for other people. And then that's you had awesome. the other people that were like, "Hey, I just want to be safe. I want to stay home." So right. we've been able to cycle some of these shifts be- between the people, but I mean, it's definitely not enough. And then you have people complaining, and I'm like, "Listen, I, I hate to tell you the hard truth about this, but again, we had 30 shifts before. Now we have four. You know what I mean?" There's well, I'm so just I'm looking do. at the fact that you guys are still open, right? Oh, and you're still yeah. doing <laughs> it like that. That alone, like yeah. kind of what you said in the article, like that's a win. Oh it's yeah, sad it's to say. It, but, luck, that's us being lucky. But that's you being lucky is yeah. that you're able to still get some revenue. I and mean, we had a couple couple servers the other day in Colonial Heights that walked away with like 120 a piece just from to go order. So hey. at yeah. least a couple people are making some money. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then we're we're able to stay afloat so that way when this thing blows over. Um, uh, so back to another another article. You know, when this thing blows over, you know we'll still be alive. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, I think it's a uh, you know actually last week it was. 30,000 restaurants had closed and definitely will never be opening their doors again oh, really? because yeah. of the situation. They can't they can't weather the storm. Uh, maybe they're over leveraged or they just they, this was the time for them to get out. Um, 
but the restaurant association has already um, estimated in the next you know thirty days. Uh, I think it's going to be like twelve percent of all restaurants in the United States are going to close down indefinitely. On top and, of and, and never open the thirty thousand. So mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking about a whole lot of jobs there. I mean, that's a hundred and hundred and ten to one hundred and thirty thousand um, restaurants that are closing. Each one of those could hold anywhere from twenty to thirty people that work there, upwards to you know a hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, place. like, if you look at you know where where I work with <clears> chicks, you know that that umbrella of they also own the porch on Long Creek. I mean, you're talking over 360 employees right. at work right now. And so there's just a, between two restaurants. There's like about to be a workforce out there that uh, I don't think that you know. I like to be. Po- I want to be positive about everything, but at the end of the day, I mean, who's going to invest in restaurants after the situation? How many more restaurants right. are going to open up right away to to absorb all these people that have lost their jobs now? I mean, the truth of the matter is, is that uh, sadly. This industry is taking a hit so hard. It's gonna take it's gonna take years before it get, recovers again. Yeah. And then you know, as far as these jobs that were it was, um, you know, I, I make enough money serving doing this thing. Like they're just not gonna be enough. There's not gonna be yeah. enough restaurants to, to absorb those people. Right. Sadly. Right. Yeah. Do, do you? <clears throat> so I, I've seen a lot of like easement to laws, right, that we have here mm-hmm. in in the state uh, pertain, pertaining to. Um, the, the industry, the restaurant industry. Um, one of them now being that, um, what is it? Uh, alcohol. Yeah. Be huge on the alcohol, right? So like distilleries can now, not sell only, to go. Yeah. they can not only sell to go you and deliver, deliver to your house. but they can deliver it to your house. Okay. They can like fucking ship it. You can buy it from, you know what I'm saying? And they can just ship I it mean, to your house. <laughs> sink or swim, right? <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, but yeah. like, you know, so I'm like, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, okay, so all of the um, different states, like think of like a Texas or like a Las mm-hmm. Vegas or like a Louisiana, um, and we have these laws now where this is all speculation, mm-hmm. um, but maybe something to kind of help kind of jump start that again. Maybe they ease out on that uh, that food percentage. You know what I'm saying that you have to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that happening. Absolutely. Sure. You know what I mean? I think there there needs to be a lot of stuff done as far as the the industry of the hospitality industry in general i mean easement of taxes on on companies Mm -hmm. i mean you know even for the for the ownership to have a little bit of ease on their payroll taxes maybe even their sales tax because at the end of the day i mean if you look at the the average of any restaurant you know i mean or most restaurants i mean your bottom line is like 20 25 to 35 percent if you're doing it right you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it's not like a whole lot of take home like you know what, what people get this idea is they come into a really busy restaurant they go like oh my god look at all these people they're making like all this money which they can be making a good amount of money, but the amount of volume and, and revenue that goes to that place, they're not holding on to a big chunk of that. You know what I mean? It's, oh, a, yeah. it's a, a serious serious production. People you know I mean? always underestimate the operating costs of the a restaurant. The operating costs of a restaurant yeah. are tremendous. So that's where that, that issue comes in where, you know, where, where, do you cut the, where do you cut the cost the most at? I mean, what's the biggest problem with any business? Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as cost goes, and that's going to be your employers. I mean, your employees. So you got your servers are making 213, your busters are making 213. They... So they take advantage of that, but at the end of the day, it doesn't work for those employees anymore either. It's not going to – I think that, that thing is going to be mm-hmm. uh, moving out pretty soon. I'm curious to see um, – <clears throat> I'll have to do a little bit of research on um, some of the things that they did at the end of the Great Depression. But I know that we've got the stimulus right now. You know, they've you know pumped in uh, $2, billion or $2 trillion into our economy. Um, not only with like, you know, business loan buybacks, you know, Mm -hmm. also payroll, um, payroll loan help, um, fucking stimulus checks that allegedly are going to be cut and sent to our bank accounts. Yeah. (laughs) It's all all, all (laughs) CC. So I've been keeping, I've been keeping a close eye on the, the PPP, which is the paycheck, uh, or paycheck protection program, which is the best one right now where, you know, you, you will get an, a 250% of your average monthly payroll, Right. Um, what you're able to do with that is 75% of it, if you use it for, for your employees to keep them afloat, keep them alive and retain them to be, you know, be there when it's all over and use the other 25% to pay either your, um, your lease, your mortgage, whatever kind of utilities, that kind of thing. If you use it in that, in that structure, in that way, it is forgiven. You will not have to pay it back, which is incredible. Nice. It's like unprecedented. So there's people out there that I know that, you know, one of them that I know is getting about, getting about 270,000. Um, if he doesn't use that seventy five percent completely for uh, for his employees, say he uses fifty percent, he'll only owe twenty five percent of that loan. Uh, have to pay that back at one percent, which is oh, that's that's not like the bad best, at all. It's that's like the a, best, yeah, best situation. It's the best deal you'll ever get. So yeah. it's it's a great great thing that they've set up. 
on the flip side, today is or what was it? Friday was the first day that it was implemented, and then here we are today. Um, and like Wells Fargo is already opt. It's like I can't. We're not doing it anymore. We're not accepting any more applications.